Hi, everyone. This is Mahabeli from the American University in Cairo. And with me is Mia. Hi, I'm Mia Zamora. I'm at Kane University, which is in New Jersey. Sarah. And Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm at Hereford College of Arts in the UK. So Sarah has an activity for us today, uh, and she's got a video. I'll let her explain. Uh, let us, do you want me to share the screen first, or do you want to explain it real quick? Um, I'll explain it really quickly. It's a very short activity. It's based on psychogeography. And just to give a little bit of concept, um, context, I put together a very, very short video. So if Maha could share that, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Let me just make sure it starts from... Welcome. This activity invites you to explore your surroundings as part of a pop-up psychogeography journey. Psychogeography was first developed by the letterists in the 1950s, but it's largely associated with the work of situationists. They explored the city in new and surprising ways, sometimes using walkie-talkies to share their thoughts as part of a remote dialogue. And this notion of the derive reinforces a sense of letting the observer drift with their spaces, and we invite you to practice a derive, a drifting kind of space. Take a journey in your surroundings for about 10 and 20 minutes and look at your space as a site of mystery full of unexpected encounters. Jot down your ideas, images or sketches or words, take pictures, make a map, and then share your journey in a live video discussion. I need to like stop it before I start sharing another video, you know when that happens in class? Yes. <laughs> okay. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about this? So we have a situation here, which is typical of a classroom where I just prepared like five minutes before class time. Nia just woke up, so she hasn't seen this video except just like right now. And we assume Sarah has something prepared because she's a good student. I'm super prepared. <laughs> but the whole point of this is it's not meant to be a particularly serious thing. It's meant to be just looking at things that you know, so things that can be around you now. So you can do this, it doesn't have to take 10 or 20 minutes, just looking around the room where you are and thinking about it in a different way, thinking about the wonderful things in it as a site of wonder and how you can kind of retell those in a slightly different way through words or through pictures or through drawing, drawing a map. So I've just got a section of words about my garden and we can lead, whoever wants to lead can, but you can just look around you and just tell us live what you can see and how you can interpret that as something that's wonderful and different. Mm. Okay. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I love this. That's always actually. hard. Or do you want me to go first and, and, and share my garden with you? Yeah. Do I do that? Okay. So mine's words. And because I am super prepared, um, and because it's the sort of activity I suggested. So I walked around my garden with my eyes shut because I love my garden, but it's a very visual thing. And I thought I want to experience this in a new and different way. And so I just wrote down me moving from my computer and walking around my garden. And so the words I've got is silver curve, a flicker of eyes, a neck, a shadow patch on screen, a slight irregular sound like rice or rain, and that's be typing. And then outside, a spider shadow fast against the wall, fur and wings, rosemary is a leafy underskirt, the round apple which smells of vinegar and honey, a feather hair of willow, a quince fruit or furry, and the scent of flowers, black currants, a Moroccan mint, spearmint, apple mint, the wetter, because then I, my hand reached the pot and got a bit wet, and sharp peppermint. So that's just a kind of, I try, what I was just doing is really quick sensory description of my garden, because I think I, that was, to me, was my fight of wonder. It's oh, that, wonderful. That's so unexpected. Did you take like audio notes while you were walking or how did you do this? No, I didn't. I took a notebook with me and I shut my eyes. Oh, with your eyes closed, you were taking notes? And you <laughs> no. your handwriting again? <laughs> No, wow. my eyes no, I, didn't, I didn't go all the way around. I did actually the first time I'd got my head on a fence. So I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to my eyes. Oh no. I love it. Me too. Love it so much because all your other senses are so awake because your eyes are closed, right? Can I share something that one of my students did as well? Because this is actually. Yeah, do you have permission to share it? Um, I haven't asked her for specific permission, but she did post it on a live Padlet board. Um, okay, which she knows is public. 
Yeah. Maybe I should ask her first, actually. Maybe if we write something. Let's keep it in the additional resources. Yeah, keep it in the additional resources. But tell us what it was like. Yeah, I won't, show, I won't show exactly what it was, but it was a short video. And it was just absolutely wonderful. It was a short video and it was very simple and it was just gorgeous. And it just changed something that normally you'd think is just a super simple patch of thing that you see anywhere into something really marvellous. So I hope she, let, she will let me share. Yeah. So do you want to have a go? Do you want to have a go? Although you're not prepared, do you want to have a go? And just talk us. Mine is really superficial compared to yours, but I'll make a story out of it. Make so a this story. Is like me. I'm one of those students who's not prepared, but tries to look like really intellectual. So <laughs> when, today, today I'm home. Long story, COVID related story, but it's okay. So I'm home today. I thought I would be actually somewhere else today. So it would have been more interesting. But anyway, um, it, my home would be interesting for anyone else other than me, I guess. Uh, but instead of actually looking at something physical in my home, my daughter's sitting right next to me playing Minecraft. So I took a screenshot of her playing Minecraft because when you talk about mystery, for me, Minecraft is a really mysterious space that my daughter immediately gets, but which I have no idea what it is. You can actually, I took a picture off the screen, so it's not a screenshot. So you can actually see my, the reflection of my daughter's hands. And I think that image is really mysterious. You don't see her face, but you can see her hands. Um, and I have no idea what it is she's just built here, but it's beautiful because there are these different color tiles hey, mommy, and there's a, there's a stair, like the a ladder going up somewhere and it's raining. And I don't know what makes it rain in Minecraft, but I think it's outside of her hands. Um, and there's this moss, I guess, which I get to see a lot in Minecraft. But I don't understand any of what this what is. Do you mean that? What's this green stuff at the top of the brick? It's greenery. I think it's moss. What what brick? On Minecraft, look over here. Uh, that's that's dirt. Yeah, I don't know. That's if you can dirt. Hear that. That's dirt. Grass? Okay, hold on. I thought it was brick. Ah. You know, I know nothing about Minecraft. And then there's there's all this stuff that she has over here, which she's working with, and this looks like a magic potion or something that she's building with. And for me, yeah. it's like she plays a lot of Minecraft, and I have no idea what this is. So to me, that's a very mysterious space that she lives in and enjoys. And I think during the pandemic has been. A space of freedom for her like she went swimming before she could go swimming in real life and she'd say well this is minecraft you can do anything and she flies and uh, well, so creative it mode. kind of i think it affected her well-being a lot and so wow she's seen some really beautiful stuff right now too anyway so i'm gonna stop here look i want to take a screenshot of this it's so beautiful go get your phone and take a picture. Oh, great. okay <laughs> all right i'll stop here and, and let me uh, share that was I wonderful I loved it. I loved the, the way in which um, what you see is so much more than, you know, the plan of action in Hoda's head. What you're noticing is all of it fresh. So I guess that's the sort of spirit of the exercise, right, Sarah? I loved oh. that. I thought that was wonderful. And yeah. I loved that it was like you just took us into a completely different world, which to me was a, an amazing world of wonder. And also you've got the person in there, in the actual screenshot, you had the reflection of the hands of the person building the world. So that's, ex that's yes, extraordinary. Yes, exactly. I think that that's in your living room. You've got this little, the world in your living room and, and the potion bottles and the things being built and the grass and the trees and the, and this, that, I think that is absolutely one, full of, like really full of wonder. I guess that's the key word, this question of wonder. So, um, when I, when I go now, I, I just like Maha, I'm not necessarily feeling like I have as much, um, you know, poet, poetic um, acumen for what, for the garden, which was so beautiful and so sensual. But I'll just tell you what I'm looking at right now. In front of me is an empty room because recently we turned some very old, um, hardwood, hardwood floors that were very tired and needed uh, a facelift. We re-sanded them and then um, stained them very, very light. So now they've transformed into what we call here like a Scandinavian look, um, you know, and it brings all the natural light into the room. But the room is still entirely empty because we're letting the stain and the um, treatment settle. And so what I'm really staring at is a blank canvas of space and reimagining what's possible in this room. 
oftentimes the room that I've been, that I'm staring at now has been used almost like a thoroughfare. Some people think of it as like a dining room, but we had a couch in there and you could like move through it to go to other rooms. But now I'm seeing all the possibility and potential in that room and how to live in it differently than it might've been lived in before, um, mostly as a thoroughfare or because there was a couch in there because it's next to the kitchen. And oftentimes you'd take your tea or your coffee and then whoever was sitting on the couch would speak to who was in the kitchen, sort of like a waiting area for the person who was doing the preparing and a way to communicate and connect. So that was very nice, but now it could be so many other things too. And so I'm just imagining what's possible in that room but mostly I'm embracing the fact that it's a blank canvas and um, that we can paint on it and fill it out in a variety of different ways. Maybe even change the color of the walls to, to inspire different kinds of emotion when being in the room. So that's it for me, just quite pragmatic and on the spot. <laughs> wow, that's wonderful. That, was a, that really is a sight of wonder, something that's so full of possibility. And you outlined all the different, it's like you story told your space with all the different possible narratives. And you're in this space that sort of just opens itself to all these possibles. I think that's fantastic. A really wonderful description as well. I don't know how you did that so early in the morning and kind of just, just out there. That's extraordinary. I, I, I loved how it, it took from your memories of your past of what that space used to be and then into your imagination of the future. And I, I think, you know, very few people, Mia, would take an empty space and say so much about it. Yes, I know. I know that was amazing. And it became populated with the things I could imagine in my head, the empty space with the couch and the, the, the idea of a space that's both a space of kind of possibility for different things, but also a thoroughfare, a kind of space that's one of those in-between spaces. I think that's such an exciting way to interpret this as well. It's really wonderful. I actually love the freedom of this activity, which is itself like a blank canvas, like you could choose to focus on anything. And at the same time, it promotes reflexivity and it promotes, you choose what you want to express about yourself and about your surroundings and you take it wherever you want to take it. Um, I was actually encouraged by how yours, it was Sarah's was very poetic and in some ways very polished, but also very not did not, I thought that I would have to like do this multimedia thing. Uh, and like you said, your student did a video and it could have been like we were talking just before we went live is that you can do a very edited video that's very beautiful and very perfect. Or you could do something like what we do here, which is very messy and just natural. Um, and the way you did it made me realize that you can choose which part of yourself to polish and which part of yourself to keep messy for this kind of activity, which gave me a lot of freedom because I was a little embarrassed by mine it was just a screenshot off of Minecraft, Minecraft screen, but you made me realize it's what I make of what I've got to show. Uh, and and yeah, that you accepted house. the Minecraft screen rather than a real picture of my house, which gives me a lot more privacy. I mean, obviously you can see my house right behind me, but anyway, you know what I mean? Like if I was a student who wasn't sharing my screen, I could just talk or I could just share a video or a picture. Okay, after we finish this video, okay? I don't know if you can hear her, but she wants to show you something. But she'll show you something. It would be lovely to see. I think that's, that, that's the thing about this kind of, because you could also do it outside. You could go around a park if you really didn't want to talk about your surroundings on the spot. It's something that you could think, or you could even think about a place where you'd been. And, and as a teacher, you could adapt the activity. So if you were nervous and if you knew you had students who might not want to share their immediate surroundings, you could say, imagine a place, imagine a place that you'd like to share with us. But I do like, what I like about it is the sense that you can take something that's really kind of, really, really looks as if it might be mundane, but actually when you have it story told and when you're storytelling, you see the possibilities in it, which I think was wonderful about the Minecraft picture, because it is just sort of complete fantasy world in a sense, but it's also quite real. It's also got a person in it. And you can imagine that building and the making and the things you can do in that. It becomes a space of real possibility. It actually is a space of massive possibility. So it's, I think for me, what I like about doing this is that it takes something that's mundane and you start to hopefully think about the mundane things in a different way and share that with people. Yeah, and just to add to that, Sarah, I think what's built in this um, 
exercise of reflexivity and reflection is the possibility of transformation, right? You see, just as you said, something mundane, but with new fresh eyes, it's just transformed into something that has all kinds of meaning. And that act in and of itself is so um, empowering and fulfilling and just um, takes you from a place of blank to a place of hope. Um, it's a wonderful uh, pivot. And so I just love the, the, the little lens onto that is a very good instinct to bring into your life as well. And I, I also really love that preparing or not preparing didn't make a difference. Uh, this was uh, it's always one of the things you worry about is, you know, when some students are prepared, some students are not. You do want a couple students to be prepared so that they can start, you know, they can have the sort of the, the bravery to start. But then once that got going, I think it was really well. Is there anything else you want to add, uh, Sarah or Mia, before we stop the video? I just want to say thank you because that's been absolutely such a delight to, to talk with you and done to hear about your spaces and and to share this with you thank you so much thank you so i yeah. just want to say thank you for starting my days so with wonder <laughs> thank you i love the part about the wonder and the yes mystery. i love no. that yes that's good thank you Bye. oh this is good that was good enough